So my name is Sergio Guadarrama. I'm a senior software engineer at Google Brain, and I lead in the TF Agents team. And I'm Eugene Brevdo, a software engineer on Google Brain team, working on reinforcement learning. So today we're going to talk about reinforcement learning. So how many of you remember how you learned how to walk? Yeah? You stumble a little bit, you try one step, doesn't work, you lose your balance, you try again. So when you're trying to learn something that is hard and you need a lot of practice, you need to try many times. So in this cute little robot, it's basically trying to do that. Just moving the legs, doesn't coordinate very well, but it's trying to learn how to walk. After learning try multiple times, in this case a thousand times, it learns a little bit how to do the first steps. Move it forward a little bit before falling off. It will learn train a little longer, then it's able to actually walk around, go from one place to another, and find their way around the room. Probably you have heard about all the applications of reinforcement learning over the last couple of years, you know, including recommender systems, data certain coolings, uh, real robots like that, chemistry, maths, this little cute little robot, but also like AlphaGo, that play Go like better than any human. Now I have a question for you. How many of you have tried to actually implement an RL algorithm? Okay, I see quite a bit of hands. Very good. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went through that pain too. <laughs> you know, many people who try get the first prototype right away. It seems to be working, but then you miss a lot of different pieces. All the details have to be right, all the things, all the bugs, everything, because it's very unstable. You don't know if it's a bug, it's a feature. So there's a lot of pieces. <laughs> a replay buffer, there's a lot of things you need to do. So we suffer through the same problem at Google, so we decided to implement a library that many people can use. And today, the TF Agents team is very happy to announce that it's available online. You can go to GitHub, you can pip install it, and start using Radiway. And hopefully, you will provide feedback, contributions, so we can make this better over time. So now, what is TF Agents and what it provides? So we try to make it very robust, very scalable, and easy to use reinforced learning for TensorFlow. So it's going to be easy to debug, easy to try, and easy to get good things going. For people who are new to, learn, to reinforced learning, we have collabs and things, documentation and samples, so you can learn about it. For people who want to really solve a real problem, a complex problem, we have already ways to take state-of-the-art algorithms and apply it directly. Or for people who are researchers and want to develop new RL algorithms, they don't need to build all the single pieces. They can build on top of it. We make it well-tested and easy to configure, so you can start doing your experiments right away. We build on top of all the goodies of TensorFlow 2.0 that you just saw today, like TF figures to make the, de the development and the de uh, debugging a lot easier, TF Keras to build the networks and the models, TF function when you want to make things to go faster, and then we make it very modular and extensible, so you can cherry pick. It's a library, you can cherry pick with the pieces that you need and extend them as you need it. And for those who are not ready for the change yet, we make it compatible with uh, TensorFlow 114. So we go back to the little sample of the little robot trying to walk. This is in a nutshell the, how the code looks like. You have to define some networks, in this case, an actor distribution network and a critic network, and then an actor, and an agent, the soft actor critic agent in this case. And then, assuming we have some experience already collected, we can just train through it. TF agents provide a lot of RL algorithms, RL environments already, like OpenAI Gene, Atari, Muyoko, PyBullet, DM Control, and maybe yours soon. We also provide the state of the art algorithms, including DQN, TD3, PPO, Software Critic, and many others. And they are more coming soon, and hopefully more from the community. They are fully tested with quality regression tests and speed tests to make things keep working. As an overview of the system, it looks like that. You, on the left side, you have all the collection aspects of it, and we're going to have some policy that's going to interact with the environment and collect some experience. Probably we put in some replay buffers to work with it later, and on the right side, we have all the training pipeline. We're going to read from this experience, and our agent is going to learn to improve the policy by training a neural network. Let's focus for a little bit in these environments. How do we define a problem? How do we define a new task? Let's take another example. In this case, it's breakout. The idea is like you have to play this game, move the power left and right, and trying to break the bricks on the top. You, get, you break the bricks, you get rewards, so the points go up. 
you let the ball drop, then the points go down. So the agent is going to receive some observation, in this case, multiple frames from the environment. It's going to decide which action to take. And then based on that, it's going to get some reward and then just loop again. How this look into the code is something like this. You define the observation specification. It's like what kind of observation this environment provides. In this case, it will be frames, but it could be any tensors or any other information, multiple cameras, multiple things. And then the action specs. It's like what actions can I make in this environment? In this case, only left and right. But many other environments, we have multiple actions. Then a reset method, because we're going to play this game a lot of times, so we have to reset the environment. And then a step method, that taking an action is going to produce a new observation and give us some reward. Given that, we could define a policy by hand, for example, and start playing this game. You just create the environment, define your policy, reset the environment, and start looping over it and start playing the game. If your policy is very good, you will get a good score. To make the learning even faster, we make these parallel environments. So you can run these games in parallel multiple times and wrap in TensorFlow so it will go even faster and then do the same loop again. What happened in general is like we don't want to define these policies by hand. So let me hand it over to Eugene, who's going to explain how to learn those policies. Thank you, Sergio. Um, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, as Sergio said, um, I gave an example of how you would interact um, with the environment. Um, uh, by a policy. And we're going to go into a little bit more detail and talk about how to make policies, uh, how to train policies um, to maximize the rewards. Okay, so kind of going over it again, um, policies take observations and emit uh, parameters of a distribution, uh, emit a distribution over the actions. And in this case, the observations are an image or a stack of images. Um, there's an underlying neural network that converts those images to the parameters of the distribution. Um, and then the policy um, emits, emits that distribution, or you might sample from it to actually take actions. Okay. So let's talk about networks. I think uh, you've seen some variation of this slide over and over again today. Um, a network, in this case, uh, a network used for deep queue learning, um, is essentially a container for a bunch of Keras layers, in this case, your um, inputs go through a convolution layer, um, and so on and so forth. And then um, the final layer uh, emits uh, logits uh, over the number of actions that, that you might take. The core method of the network um, is the call. So it takes observations in a state, possibly an RNN state, and, emit, um, uh, and emits the, the logits in the new updated state. OK. so. Let's, let's talk about policies. First of all, we provide uh, a large number of policies, some of them specifically tailored to particular algorithms and particular agents. Uh, but you, we all, you can also implement your own. So it's, it's uh, useful to, to go through that. So a policy takes one or more networks. And the fundamental um, method on a policy is the distribution method. So this um, takes a time step, which essentially contains the observation um, passes, that, passes that through one or more um, networks and emits the parameters of the output distribution, in this case, logits. It then returns a tuple of three things. Uh, so the first thing is an actual distribution object. So Josh Stillen just spoke about tensor flow probability, and here's a tensor flow probability categorical distribution built from those logits. It emits the next state, again, um, possibly containing some RNN state information. And it uh, also emits um, side information. So side information is useful. Uh, perhaps you want to emit some information that you want to log in your metrics. That's not part of the, that's not the action. Or you maybe want to um, log some information that is necessary for training later on. So the agent is going to use that information to actually train. Um, OK. So now let's actually talk about training. The agent class. Um, uh, encompasses the main RL algorithm, and that includes um, the training um, and uh, uh, reading batches of, of data and trajectories um, to update the neural network. Okay, so here's a, a simple example. Um, first, you create a, a deep Q learning agent. You give it a network. You can um, access a, a policy, specifically a collection policy, from that agent, that policy uses the underlying network that you, that you passed in, 
and uh, maybe perform some additional work, like maybe perform some exploration, like epsilon greedy exploration, and also logs side information that is going to be necessary to be able to train um, the agent. The main method on the agent is called train. Um, it takes experience in the form of batch trajectories. These come, for example, from a replay buffer. Now, assuming you have, uh, you have trained your, uh, your networks and you're performing well during data collection, uh, you also might want to uh, take a policy that performs more greedy action and doesn't explore at all, just exploits, um, takes the best actions that it thinks uh, are the best and doesn't log any side information, doesn't emit any side information. So that's, that's the deployment policy. And you can save this to a saved model, for example, and put it into deployment. Okay. So uh, a more complete example, uh, again, here we have a deep key learning network. It accepts the observation and action specs from the uh, environment and some uh, other arguments describing what kind of keras layers to combine. You build the agent with that network, um, and then you get a TF data data set. Um, in this case, um, you get it from a replay buffer object, um, but you can get it from any other um, data set that emits um, the correct form of trajectory, batch trajectory information, and then you iterate over that data set um, calling agent.train um, to update the underlying neural networks, which are then reflected in the updated policies. So let's talk a little bit about collection. Now, given a collection policy, and it doesn't have to be trained, um, it can be it can have just random parameters. Um, you want to be able to collect data, and we provide a number of tools for that. Again, if your environment is something that is in Python, you can wrap it. So um, the core um, tool for this um, is the driver. And going through that, first you create your batch environments at the top. Um, then you create a replay buffer. In this case, we have a um, TF uniform replay buffer. So this is a replay buffer backed by TensorFlow variables. And then you create the driver. So the driver accepts the environment, the collect policy from the, from the agent, and uh, a number of callbacks. Um, and uh, when you call driver.run, um, what it will do is it will iterate. In this case, it will take 100 steps uh, of interaction between the policy and the environment create trajectories and pass them to the observers. Uh, so after um, driver.run has finished, um, your replay buffer has pop been populated with 100 more um, frames of, of data. All right, so here's kind of the complete picture. Um, again, you create your environment. Um, you uh, interact with that environment to the driver, given a policy. Um, that uh, those interactions get stored in a replay buffer. Um, the replay buffer you read from with a TF data data set, um, and then the agent um, trains with batches from that um, data set and updates the network underlying the, the policy. Uh, here's kind of a set of commands to do that. Um, the, if you look at the bottom, um, here's that loop you call driver run to collect data. Um, stores that in the replay buffer, and then you read from the underlying, from the data set generated from that replay buffer and train the agent. You can iterate this over and over again. Okay, so uh, we have a lot of exciting things um, coming up. Uh, for example, we have a number of uh, new agents that we're going to release, C51, D4PG, and so on. We're adding complete support for contextual bandits that are backed by neural networks um, to the API. We're going to release a number of baselines uh, uh, and as well as a um, uh, number of new replay buffers. So uh, in particular, we're going to be releasing some um, distributed replay buffers um, in the next uh, couple of quarters, and those will be used for distributed collection. So uh, distributed collection allows you to parallelize your data collection across many machines um, and be able to maximize the throughput of your um, training URL algorithm that way. We're also working on distributed training um, using TensorFlow's new distribution strategy API, allowing you to train at a massive scale on uh, many GPUs and TPUs. And we're adding support for more environments. So please uh, check out um, TF Agents on GitHub. And we have a number of collabs 
I think eight or nine is a discount, exploring different um, parts uh, of the system. And uh, as, I, as Sergio said, GIF Agents is built to solve uh, many real world problems. Um, and in particular, we're interested in seeing what your problems are. Um, for example, where we welcome contributions for new environments, um, new RL algorithms for those um, of you out there who are RL experts. Uh, please come chat with uh, me uh, or Sergio after the talks uh, or uh, file an issue on the GitHub issue tracker um, and uh, let us know, let us know uh, what you think. Thank you very much.